All right. So, you know, how everybody's always talking about learning styles like, oh, I'm a visual learner or I need to listen to something to really get it. Yeah, definitely a popular concept. Yeah. And it makes you wonder, right? Like, is there really a magic formula for learning based on like whether you prefer looking at pictures or whatever? We're trying to sort that out today. Actually. Yeah, because it's really appealing to think, oh, if I just figure out my learning style, then boom, learning's going to be easy. Exactly. Who wouldn't want that? Right. But um, we're all about looking at the evidence, right? Absolutely. So we've got some articles here, some expert opinions on this whole learning styles thing. And one that really jumped out was from uh, Learn Magazine. They didn't beat around the bush. They pretty much just came right out and said, learning styles are a myth. Yeah, and not just, you know, some random people saying that either. They brought in some real heavy hitters in, you know, the learning and development world, like Harold Stolovich, huge name in instructional design. Okay, yeah. And then Richard E. Clark. This guy basically wrote the book, actually, multiple books on evidence-based training. And before we go any further, can we just define evidence-based training, just in mm -hmm. case someone's, like, new to this whole world and they're wondering what that even means. Yeah, for sure. So like at its core, evidence-based training is basically saying, hey, let's look at the actual data. Let's look at the research, right? Instead of just going with our gut or assuming something works, right. we want to see actual studies and hard evidence that something's actually effective. So it's not just like, oh, this seems like a good idea. It's like, no, we've actually tested this and it works. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so with learning styles then, what did, uh, what did these experts find when they applied that evidence-based lens, you know? Mm -hmm. So Clark, he pointed to three like massive research reviews. And we're talking top academic journals here, not just, you know, some random blog posts. Right, yeah. And they all basically said the same thing. Ready for this? Matching how you teach someone to their supposed learning style does not actually improve their learning at all. Really? So like even if you say give a visual learner a bunch of diagrams and images, it's not going to make a difference. It doesn't seem to, no, which is kind of wild when you think about it, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, when they tell you if your car starts to skid, you have to steer into it. Right. Your gut says go the other way. Ooh. But no, you got to fight that instinct because it's wrong. Yeah. Maybe it's kind of like that with learning styles. Yeah, maybe. But then that begs the question, if the evidence is out there, why do we still cling to this idea of learning styles so much? Right. Like, who would be the most invested in figuring out if this stuff actually works? Like, really, really invested. Think about it. Who has to train tons of people, often on really complicated stuff, and needs them to learn it fast? By the military. Bingo. Like, the U.S. Navy, like, thousands of recruits, right? Yeah. And they got to learn everything from, like, firefighting on a ship to, you know, complex weapon systems. Richard Perlstein, he's a researcher who's worked with the Navy, saw this as the perfect opportunity to put learning styles to, like, the ultimate test. Oh, wow. Okay, so what did they do? I'm guessing they had, like, different groups learning in different styles, visual, auditory, uh -huh. hands-on, and then they saw who did better. Exactly. They had classes where they really emphasized one learning style over the others, and they were super rigorous about it, like meticulously tracked how well everyone was learning. And guess what? The results. Yeah. No real difference. Oh, wait. Yeah. How someone learned best, like what their supposed learning style was, didn't actually predict how well they performed. So even with like Navy training, where the stakes are so high, yeah. learning styles still didn't make a difference. Nope. And this is what's so interesting, right? It just goes to show that just because something seems intuitive or feels right doesn't necessarily mean it's true, which we kind of already knew from that whole steering into a skid thing, right? For sure. Okay, so we've got this idea that just won't quit, even when the research seems to be waving us away from it. Why is that? Why do we cling to learning styles, even if they're not all they're cracked up to be? Well, educational psychologist Sigmund Tobias offered a really intriguing explanation. He called it the romantic view of education. Romantic? Like we should be learning by candlelight with poetry in hand. What does that have to do with how our brains process information? Not quite, haha. Tobias was using romantic to mean kind of like an idealized view of education, you know? Like we want to believe learning should be simple, that there's this one size fits all solution for everybody. So it's more comforting to think, okay, if I can just figure out my learning style, then everything's going to be a breeze. Yeah, exactly. Like, I just need to find the right key, unlock that learning potential, and boom, I'm good to go, right? But the reality, as we've seen, it's not that simple. It's way more complex than that. Right, right. Yeah, it's like that skidding car thing again, right? Uh -huh. I think one thing is right, like our gut is telling us, do this. But really, it's the opposite. 
Absolutely. And, you know, it, it makes sense that we'd want to hold on to that, right? Like, it feels good to say, I'm a visual learner, so I need all my information presented visually. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's the most effective way to learn overall. So if we can't rely on these learning styles, these labels, how do we actually move forward? What's the takeaway for our listener who's been thinking about learning styles for a while and now might be thinking, wait, so what am I supposed to do now? It's not about just chucking everything we thought we knew out the window. You know, just because the learning styles approach might not be the be all end all, that doesn't mean that individual differences aren't important. Actually, that's something that Will Thalheimer, another expert in the Learn magazine article, really stresses. So it's more about understanding our own, like, individual quirks and preferences, mm -hmm. but not like forcing them into these little boxes of visual or auditory or whatever, right? Right. We all come to the table with different backgrounds, different motivations. Some people have actual learning difficulties, you know? We have to take those things into account for sure, but not just through that lens of, okay, this person is visual, so everything needs to be visual for them. It's yeah. like saying, okay, you like to listen to music. That means you'll automatically be great at playing the guitar. Not yeah. necessarily, right? So. If we can't just slap a label on ourselves, you know, like I'm a visual learner and just leave it at that, how do we actually apply this? Like deeper understanding of learning. What's the takeaway for our listeners who are like, okay, I'm ready to ditch those learning styles, but I still want to learn as effectively as possible, right? What do I do? I think it starts with self-awareness, but maybe in a way you haven't really thought about before. Okay, how so? Well, think about those times when you were really in the zone, you know, like you were just absorbing information like a sponge, those aha moments. But don't just focus on what you were learning, focus on how you were learning it. Were you taking notes? Were you watching a video, talking to somebody about it? What was the context of that learning experience? Yeah, that's a good point because we're so often focused on the content itself, but not the actual method or even the environment, right? Yeah. So pay attention to those aha moments. Yeah. What was it about the how that really made it click for you? Exactly. And then once you start to see some patterns, don't be afraid to experiment. Like maybe you love listening to podcasts. Yeah. I mean, hey, we're doing one right now, but that doesn't mean it's the best way for you to learn a new language or something, right? Right. Maybe flashcards or writing things down would be better, even if it doesn't feel as, you know, as inherently fun. Right. And I think you made a really good point about experimenting. We can get so stuck in our routines, but maybe shaking things up is actually what helps us learn best. You know, it's like cross training for your brain. I love that. And that's really what this whole deep dive is about. It's not just about like debunking learning styles just for the sake of it. It's about approaching all information, not just learning stuff with that same critical eye. So questioning those assumptions, looking for evidence and being open to changing our minds, even if it means letting go of something that felt, you know, safe and comfortable. Yeah, exactly. And if we can start to apply that to how we learn, Imagine what else we can apply it to. It's really about becoming more discerning thinkers in general, which is a pretty valuable skill no matter what you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like we've been handed this toolkit for like critical thinking, and now it's up to us to actually go out there and use it. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, on that note, we're going to wrap up this deep dive into the myth of learning styles. But the learning doesn't have to stop here, right? We've given you some things to think about, some tools to use, but now it's your turn experiment, reflect, and keep on learning.